Welcome back. This one is gonna be super exciting. We are gonna talk about frame of motion. Motion is the ocean of the devotion. What is frame of motion? Frame of motion is a library in React that allows you to create fancy, super awesome animations using physics, using your hands, using your brain, whatever you want. It's a fantastic tool. It's a fantastic way to integrate and add animations to your React projects. You know, styling in CSS and adding animations there is very limiting. So this way is going to be super fun because we can add page transitions. We can add animations when a component uh, basically leaves the frame or when it enters the frame, when it renders, and there's so much more. So let's take a look on how we can do this. So we're going to get back to the examples here in just a bit. Let's just add it to our project. So actually we did install it. So that's another pa package we installed, Frame or Motion, right here. Um, and I'm just going to show you how it works and give you the basics. Let's just go over to our first section of our page on the About section right here. Okay? Perfect. We can remove the style components here. We had that there. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see if this is live. I think I closed up the server, so let me just go back here. Say npm start. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So, the first thing I want to show you is how to import Framer Motion. So let's go here to the About section and just say Framer Motion. All we do is we say import like that, curly brackets, motion from Framer Motion. And that's it. Okay. And now to make something have the ability to animate, you have to replace the tag. So if we have a H2 here, we have to say motion.h2 and at the end here as well, motion.h2. Kind of like with styled components, right? We do styled nav. This is kind of the same thing, motion h2, something like that. So now that we changed our h2 to the motion h2, we have specific props that we can add here. The first one that we're going to have is animate. So we're going to say animate and we're going to set this equal to two curly brackets. The second curly bracket here represents an object. And here I can basically say something like opacity one. Okay. So we want to animate to opacity one. Now there's another property that we can use called initial. And this basically again describes the initial state of this H2. So where do we start and where do we end up? Well, I'm going to start from opacity zero and that's it. I'm going to hit save and now take a look. As soon as I refresh the page, look at that. It fades in. Now it's very subtle and it's quite fast. So if you want to modify it, uh, you can go here to the animate and you can add a comma and you can define another object that's called transition like that. And here you can add another curly bracket like that. Okay. And in here, I can say something like duration two. Okay. Just like that duration two. So now take a look. It takes two seconds for this to load up. How nice. Perfect. So basically this takes effect the moment that specific component renders on the screen. Okay. So this is when this effect uh, starts kicking in. So if we navigate to another page and go back here, there we go. As soon as the component starts rendering, it starts up our animation. Perfect. Super nice. Now, one thing I want to let you know is that this animate is a live property. And what I mean by that is, we can basically hook this up to the state if we want, and we can animate it live like that. So as you can see, if the X here modifies, it starts animating straight away. So if the values change, the thing that you see on the screen is also going to change as well. Look at that. So again, you can add a slider, hook it up to state, and you can pass that state in here 
and you can update it live. Really cool. Okay, so this is the first step. Let's see what else you can do. Well, these are more complex things. Let me see if I can pull up another example. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm gonna show you because it's gonna take a bit of time. But there's a bunch of things you can do here. Uh, you can do gesture animation. So when you hover over something, you can create that animation. And look at that, it gives you quick tips on how to do that. So as you can see, you just add a while hover in there and you can add your scaling while tap. Okay, so super simple. Uh, the API is quite beautiful. You can do dragging if you want. So I can drag this. You can do scroll type animations, path animations. We're gonna cover a few of these in just a bit, but this is the basic, basically. You add an initial, you add an animate property, and you are good to go. Now, as you might tell, this can get quite crazy when you start having a bunch of props in here, right? It's gonna be quite crazy. So what we can do is we can actually separate this into a variable. So I can go here and this is what's called in frame or motion variant. And they have quite a few benefits. So I'm just gonna call this uh, const title animation like that. I'm gonna set this equal again to an object, just like that. And in here, I'm gonna define uh, a hidden property and maybe a show property. So hidden is going to be an object that's going to start from opacity of zero. And the show is going to be opacity of one. And in here, I'm going to add a transition of transition duration of two seconds. Okay. So a hidden and a show. So what I can do here now is get rid of everything like that. And I can just say variants and set this equal to curly brackets, this title anim object. And now for the initial position, I can just set this equal to a pair of quotes and I can basically say hidden in here. And then the animate, I can set this equal to show just like that. So we can do it in one line. So we need to do these properties. This is how frame or motion works with quotes here. Okay. So the variants, you're going to pass down the object with the curly brackets here, and then the initial and the animate value you have to do with quotes and we should, it should work the same way. Take a look. Now using variants also gives you another special ability. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here on the on the parent div. In this case, it's the title right here. And I'm gonna create a variant for that. I'm gonna say const, uh, let's call this container or something. I'm gonna start from hidden. I'm gonna just do, let's animate the X position. So when it's hidden, I want the X to be 100. And after, what I wanna do is show it by moving the X back to zero. Okay. So take a look. I can grab this container. Now we can go here. We can change this to a motion dot div like that. And we can go here to the last one. Also this one motion dot div hit save. Okay. So that's the first step. Second step is we can go here to the motion div and pass in the variance equal to container just like that. Okay, and then we can say initial is going to be show uh, hidden and the animate is going to be show just like that. There we go. So it kind of slides in like that. Now we can add a bit of transition here and we can say duration of one second. Now, as you can see by default, it kind of has a specific feel to it, a specific curve to it. So it's kind of snappy. So if I do 0 0.75 seconds here, as you can see, it has a specific kind of motion to it. We can change that if we want, want it to by adding an ease here. Uh, and we can say ease out. 
and that's gonna be a bit different. So let's get rid of this duration and see. So this is with ease out, and this is the default that it comes with. So there's a bunch of easing functions. If you want, you can check it out here in frame or motion. Um, ease out, ease in and out, and a bunch of custom ones that you can also make. So if you want like, like a springy effect like this, you can leave the default one, but if you don't, you can add this ease out. That's gonna make it a bit smoother. Okay, now here's the cool thing. Since we added, um, what did I wanna say, I forgot. Since we, another benefit of using variants here is that we can chain together multiple animations. And what I mean by that is we can stagger these other animations down here. The, the motion H2 here, uh, this H2 and this H2 if we wanted to. So take a look. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the H2 and I'm just gonna remove the initial and animate property. I'm just gonna leave motion H2 here with the variant of title anim. And what I'm gonna do is just copy this over here as well, H2, and paste it here as well. And just change this to motion H2, motion H2, and hit save. Okay, so what I did was I just added motion H2 to all of these, and for the variants, I just added the title anim, this one here. However, I did not add the initial and the animate to them anymore because one awesome benefit of using these variants is if you add a parent variant and you have a bunch of children in here, you can stagger them. So I can go here to the container and inside the transition, I can define another property here called stagger children like this. And I can set it equal to a number like 0 0.25 seconds. So let's take a look here. Let's make it a bit bigger, like a second, because this is kind of hard to see, one second. So there we go. Like basically when this slides in, maybe I want the sliding to finish up first and then to have these elements fade in or maybe after if I wanted to. I can go here to the transitions and add a comma and I can define a when property. So when do I want this to start? Before children, I can do that and hit save. So take a look now, it just fades in because the X animated already or I can do after children if I wanted to. And what this means is that it waits for them to fade in and then it does the X to zero, okay? So you can define when you want this container animation to start, after the children or before the children. There we go. And if you leave nothing here, it's gonna start at the same time, basically. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Uh, we're gonna do much, much more with this. For now, let's just, uh, let's get rid of it <laughs> because we're gonna do page transitions. So go here to this container and title anim. We're gonna get rid of it. We're gonna leave this motion here because we're gonna be using it, but we're just gonna get rid of everything in here. We're gonna get rid of everything in here and in here and in here. Okay, so we're just gonna leave it motion div and with motion h2s right like that. Okay, let's take a look on how we can do page transitions with motion.